In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to join an Outlook group. This process is quick and straightforward, but let's go through each step to make sure you understand how to do it successfully. By the end of this video, you'll feel confident navigating Outlook and joining any group you wish to be a part of. First, we need to start by heading over to the Outlook login page. Open your preferred web browser and enter the Outlook login URL. This page is your gateway to accessing all the features Outlook has to offer, so it's essential to get started here. You'll know you're in the right place when you see the familiar Outlook branding and the login prompt. Once you've arrived at the login page, go ahead and click on the sign in button. You'll find this button prominently displayed, encouraging you to enter your credentials. Input your email address associated with your Outlook account, followed by your password. If you've set up two-factor authentication, you may need to go through an additional verification step to ensure that it's you trying to access the account. It's always a good idea to ensure your login details are accurate. Double-checking spelling and number sequences can alleviate common headaches. After successfully signing in, you'll be directed to your Outlook mailbox. This is where all the action happens. From here, you have access to your emails, calendar, contacts, and more. To move forward in joining a group, look towards your mailbox options for something labeled Groups. This feature is vital for collaborating with colleagues, classmates, or any community you're engaged with. Next, we'll dive into discovering available groups. Find and click on the option labeled Discover Groups. This is an exciting step as you see a list of groups that might interest you or that you have access to join. It's similar to browsing a directory specifically curated within your Outlook environment. If you cannot immediately see the Discover Groups option, try looking in drop down menus or expanding sections as interfaces can vary slightly depending on updates or specific set settings. Now comes the searching part. Within the Discover Groups section, you'll notice a search bar. Use this tool to input the name or topic of the group you're interested in joining. As you type, the list may dynamically update to show relevant groups. This feature is handy in narrowing down your options, especially if you're in a large organization with many available groups. If you're not exactly sure of a group name, don't worry. Try entering keywords associated with the group you're interested in, which can also yield helpful search results. Once you've spotted the group you're interested in, clicking on it will bring up more information. This step ensures you're confident this is the group you want to join before proceeding. Details about the group, such as its purpose, members involved, or activity level, might be displayed here to help reinforce your decision-making process. It's akin to peeking through the window before stepping through the door. There's valuable insight to be gleaned. Finally, when you've decided, look for a clickable button or link saying join. By selecting this option, you're officially requesting to become a part of the group. In some cases, you might instantly join the group if it's open, but other groups might require an administrator's approval before your membership is fully activated. Don't worry if there's a waiting period. Administrators often respond relatively quickly to join requests. And there you have it, by following these steps, you now know how to join an Outlook group. This process can aid in effective communication and collaboration within your workplace or personal networks. Remember that participation in groups can not only keep you informed, but also engage you with like-minded individuals on shared projects or discussions. If at any point you run into difficulty or need a refresher, feel free to revisit this video. Interaction with Outlook, like any software, can vary slightly due to updates or changes in user interface designs, so don't be alarmed by minor differences. Most changes are well documented, and Microsoft frequently updates its support pages to assist users. Thank you for watching, and I hope this guide has been helpful. Remember to like and subscribe for more tech tutorials and tips to streamline your everyday digital tasks.